In 2017, India's rate of female labor force participation dropped to the lowest level since independence. The female labor force participation rate is the percentage of the population of women in the working age who are part of the labor force. It tells us what percentage of women in the age group of between 16 and 64 are either currently employed or are seeking employment in the economy. In 1990, India's FLFP rate was nearly 30%. By 2017, it had fallen to less than 18%. To put it another way, four out of five Indian women of the working age are neither working nor seeking employment. This is significantly lower than the workforce participation rate for men. India's FLFP rate is also lower than the rate for several similarly situated countries. Hello and welcome to this course on Decent Work for Women. To understand this alarming statistic on female labor force participation, we turn to the first of our experts in this course. In India, women's workforce participation rate is very low. In fact, it's among the lowest in the world. The closest that you have to India's workforce participation is countries in the Middle East, right? So for instance, in India, India we have about 27, 26 to 27 percent of women work in work, like as we understand work, uh, compared to men, which is about 79 percent. So you see the gap between the male female workforce participation and female, I mean, the male workforce participation and female workforce participation is more than 50 percent. And this is really, really high. So in other words, you know, if you had to put it very simply, in India, less than three in 10 women are working, whereas close to eight in 10 men are working. There's a global gap too. For instance, globally, you have three fourths of men working compared to 50% women. So the, the, the gap is about 25% uh, globally. So then the fundamental question is, why is it that women's workforce participation is so low, right? The female labor force participation rate tells us what proportion of women of the working age are employed or seeking employment. But let's look deeper. What kind of economy are they seeking work in? What types of jobs are available to them? So you have in our economy, typically in India, we have more than 90% of the workforce in the informal economy, right? And agriculture is the primary employer of both men and women. And uh, so women largely work in agriculture, but they also work in, um, so in the rural areas, women's workforce participation in agriculture. They also work in services of all kinds. So you have domestic work is one of the fastest growing sectors of employment for women in India. Women are also in public employment. And very interestingly, you have more women in, I mean, the uh, probability of women being in public employment is higher than probability of men being in public employment. We can discuss this later. Women also work in manufacturing, but typically in the Indian example, you, we have, don't have a very large manufacturing sector, which is why women's employment is proportionately lower. And this is something in the Indian context very, important to understand because many countries have uh, have seen increases in female employment via manufacturing whether it's bangladesh next door they had garments in sri lanka so in india typically we've gone from an agricultural economy to a services oriented economy and as we have done that we have seen in the last 20 years there's been a decline in women's workforce participation from agriculture and you know so people say oh it's a good thing that women don't have to work in agriculture anymore because Many of those jobs were precarious jobs. They were not, so you have income levels which are rising and because of rising income levels, it's a good thing. It's an income effect that women are leaving the workforce. Women don't have to uh, undertake dirty jobs in agriculture. Women don't have to undertake uh, jobs which pay very less, right? So that's one perspective. The other perspective is that, hey, you know, women are now getting educated. So uh, they are leaving the workforce and they are getting educated. And that's a good thing. So as our economy is developing, women need not do such jobs. 
So, um, well, you know, that may well be the case and uh, you have these perspectives are somewhat empirically valid. But the one of the pressing problems is that where do women then work if they're not going to be able to work in agriculture or it's a good thing that they're moving out of agriculture. You also see that there is a lack, a complete lack of appropriate employment for women. So, and you know, when you're talking of the workforce, so if you look at education, so um, what you have typically is you globally and as well in India, you have a U-shaped education curve. So you, if as education levels increase, women's workforce participation declines. To, and this, this makes perfect sense, right? Because the dominant of being in the workforce, if you're very poor or if you're poor, you have to, um, you have to work to, keep, to uh, keep your house running and so on and so forth. And as women become more educated, they tend to leave the workforce. So at any given point in time, workforce participation rates are the highest at the, um, when women are illiterate. And as, they be, and as education levels increase, workforce participation rate declines. Now, the thing here is that workforce participation rates increase again at some point in time. So the fundamental question is, what is the point of inflection where the workforce participation rate sort of, you know, move to a U, towards a U-turn? And th this is very interesting because um, in India, up to the higher secondary level, you are, uh, you, 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 the workforce participation rate keeps falling. And then only for graduate women and above does the workforce participation rate increase again. So in other words, overall workforce participation rates are quite low. And, uh, and even at the level of graduate and above, they increase, I mean, they increase pretty rapidly, but the, that size of the workforce is really small. Currently, India's female labor force participation rate is inversely correlated with India's rising levels of female education. As our expert explained, researchers have observed a U-shaped relationship between levels of education and labor force participation. India, it is hypothesized, is somewhere along the initial downward curve. Women with limited levels of education display the highest rates of labor force participation among Indian women. As their levels of education improve, their participation in the economy declines until there is an inflection point of education levels at which it increases again. On the other hand, greater levels of education for men almost always correlates to greater economic participation. So why is female labor force participation lower than the male labor force participation rate all over the world? Why is it especially low in India? These are two questions that we will ask in the first module of this course on decent work for women. This module is about gender inequality and work. We will learn some of the attributes of the inequality between men and women in relation to the work they do. Apart from the different rates at which they participate in the labor force, there are also differences in the types of work that are available to men and women, and also in the conditions under which men and women do the same work. Once we learn about gender inequality in employment, you will learn about some interventions in the labor market, especially those that look to correct gender inequality. That is in the second module of this course. Finally, we will learn what we can do to realize work for women that meets the standards of decent work. That will be in the third module. One of the reasons that has been attributed to the low workforce participation rate, especially among moderately educated Indian women, is that Indian women are almost always required to prioritize domestic work. That is the subject of our next video. Thanks for watching.